Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Yes. Did we forget to ask Dylan to join us today? Hey, Dylan, are you going to join us? What? Scott, Lisa, <laughs> begging Dylan oh, to come over and join us. It. Yeah, we're a little late. They started without me. They're like, Dylan. Sorry. Hey, guys. He's saying we started without I'm, them. I didn't get an invite. No, you did now. See? We just, it got sad. lost in the mail. Yeah, it's okay. It's just I'm a standing the, invite. We, we feel like we don't have to ask I am the day. real party. I am the party. The party. The party, the party not it's not a party unless it's you're here. here. It's here. Here. Okay. You know, All right. so oh, it, party is here. Oh, big party. Oh, big party. It's in our inbox. Uh, so, okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I don't know. Can we show yeah, that? Can try. On, okay. We have video <laughs> to show you on our. Screen. Yeah. Okay. So it's breaking news from First News this morning. Yeah, explain. First. Lydia uh, coming in with the video. So there was a, a semi fire on I 94 just west of West Fargo. Mm -hmm. um, big, huge flames. We showed the aftermath. The semi just destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. Before we get to the weather, because we have a lot to talk about, uh, let's, let's try to show this. Uh, one of our viewers. No, I think you can see that. Yeah, you can, you can see it. Crazy. Now, look, look at, at the flames. flames. Wow. So that was in the 6 o'clock hour this morning, yeah. right? We this got, morning? You heard about it in the 6 o'clock hour, so I'm guessing it happened a little bit before that, probably. But yeah, I mean, crazy video. Thank you, right Lydia. Yeah. That was a WDAY viewer that sent that mm -hmm. video in. So yeah. by the time we got Thank there, the, the flames were. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Will. <laughs> Will. He's the real MVP. All right, we're going to talk <laughs> more details about that fire with the truck and a lot of other stuff. But let's first talk a little weather. With because that was breaking, really breaking weather yeah. news this morning it was huge. Yeah, still it's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, fog out there. Yeah, it's really foggy out there this morning. Um, it's going to be hard for this fog to burn off. We're really not going to see a lot of sun today, and on top of that, we don't really have much wind, mm. so it will eventually burn off. But yeah. It's going to be foggy for a while, probably throughout much of the morning. I would not be surprised some spots saw fog into the afternoon. It's just the way it is. We don't really have good weather to get rid of the fog. So, mm -hmm. otherwise, temperatures in the mid 20s today, low 30s tomorrow. That's nice. That's oh, yeah. a little silver lining. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And then we're getting a warmer, junior freezing through pretty much all of next week, but also starting Monday night, going to like Thursday, we're watching that winter storm. Mm -hmm. There's an article in Inform I'm updating right now. That's what I was working on. And you guys started before the Facebook Live without me. Before we interrupted you. Yeah, so we update that as much as we can. You can find that in Inform. Um, we'll update through that, that throughout the weekend. We'll update that usually multiple times a day. And of course, when the storm starts to hit, we'll be on there cool. all the time. So that's a good go-to. Want to see what we're Inform. thinking. Inform.com. Also the Storm Tracker weather app. Yeah, that Storm works Tracker too. weather yep. app. Yep. Uh, must have, especially right now. Exactly. How was your drive in this morning? Because I, I thought it was a little scary. I come from yeah. West, just West Fargo to, to here, see. but it was really hard to see. To see it was kind of like apocalyptic that time. <laughs> it was just like all foggy, and you couldn't see anything. And all of a sudden, it was a stoplight. I mean, I was I drove five, but like visibility is definitely down to like a tenth of a mile, I'd say at times. So my drive. I didn't notice the interstate being too slippery, but the on ramp I, I used to get yeah. on was yeah, bridges, so slick, yeah, bridges. So my, the bridges were slippery for me too. The so for sure, for sure. Right. Okay, thank you, Dylan. Sorry yep. we didn't. We'll invite you sooner next time. So <laughs> next time, you know. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us for this Facebook Live. Just want to remind you as we get going, you can watch this anytime, of course, on your feed throughout the day. We go live around eight eight thirty every mm -hmm. morning. You can also watch this on our Inforum YouTube channel and, of course, the Inform dot com podcast. Just go to Inform dot com slash podcast. And that's where this lives on forever as well. Yeah, you can check it out. All right, let's talk about some of our morning headlines. New this morning, we now know the name of a man who was arrested for an armed robbery that took place in Bemidji. Police say that 43-year-old Jesse Knight robbed a Wells Fargo bank on Tuesday afternoon. He then ran away. That's when a witness saw him get into a gray Chevy Equinox. Of course, he has uh, been arrested, but police are still looking for that vehicle. And Knight is facing charges of aggravated robbery and then financial transaction card fraud. And this is an update to a story we've been tracking to you, tracking for you for several months. The Fargo Police and Oversight Board has now decided not to recommend an independent review into the officer-involved shooting that killed Shane Netterville. Uh, you may remember Netterville was a 28-year-old Native American man who was shot by a Fargo police officer back in July. Um, he was trying to drive a minivan that he was in out of a garage when officers arrived towards officers. Uh, some board members were calling for an independent investigation, questioning whether Netterville would have actually even been shot if he was a white man. Mm -hmm. uh, Fargo Police Chief David Zabolski says the evidence, however, clearly shows the officer was forced to protect himself. Yeah. All right. Also this morning, two men from Fargo are facing multiple charges after police say they were involved in a car crash and the vehicle that was stolen. 
so adds to the whole thing. That was on Thursday. Officers were getting people out of the car in some video that we showed this morning on First News. They say, you know, they kind of look like they were kind of almost pulling them out there, cuffing them on the ground, that kind of thing, so you can kind of picture the scene in your head a little bit. But they said that it happened when the car went up onto a median, it hit the median, and then it kind of went across and went into oncoming traffic. That all happened near 40th Street and Main Avenue. Police say that an officer was trying to confirm that the car was stolen when the accident happened. The driver of the vehicle was Jacob Elness of Fargo. He was arrested on multiple charges, including DUI and possession of a stolen vehicle. And then one of the passengers, Jeffrey Sheretti, was also arrested for resisting arrest. And then there were also three other passengers in that vehicle, but they were all released after the crash. A lot of details in mm -hmm. that story. Uh, interesting. Uh, new this morning, a Monaga, Minnesota woman is recovering from a two-car crash that happened in Becker County. 32-year-old Jennifer Meach was taken to Essentia in Detroit Lakes with what are being described right now as non-life-threatening injuries. There were two children in the car as well, five and seven years old. Luckily, they were not hurt. Uh, authorities are telling us right now that Meach was going west on Highway 87 when she hit a southbound postal vehicle that was crossing the highway. Luckily, everyone was wearing a seatbelt. At this point, we know no alcohol was involved in this crash. Well, it was around this time last year that uh, carbon monoxide poisoning claimed the lives of seven family members over in Moorhead. Sad story there, of course. Now, investigators believe that the family's home once had a dual sensor that could detect both smoke and carbon monoxide, but at some point that was taken down and then replaced with a detector that only detects smoke. And so, you know, all of this is kind of something that is meant to raise awareness for the dangers of carbon monoxide. That's why we're looking back and, and remembering this as a tragic incident, as a reminder to, mm -hmm. to have working carbon monoxide detectors in your home. CDC data shows more than 400 people each year die from inhaling carbon monoxide in the U.S. And then in Minnesota, there is requirements in your house to have carbon monoxide detectors within 10 feet of each bedroom, which I did not actually know. So no. interesting fact there, you're actually required to have them. Uh, if you didn't know, symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning include a dull headache, dizziness, nausea, and confusion. Switching to a much lighter story right now. Today, the fourth annual Fargo Ice Fishing and Winter Sports Show is returning to Shields Arena. Uh, we're kind of in the heart of ice fishing season here. The event has drawn upwards of 7,000 avid ice anglers and outdoor enthusiasts in the past. So what's there? Um, they have the largest indoor wheelhouse display in the region. Multiple manufacturers will be there. Uh, a whole bunch of the, the latest and greatest in, in ice fishing. Mm -hmm. uh, 12 bucks to get in the door. If you want more information, go to FargoIceFishingShow.com. Cool, cool. We've been talking about it a lot. Concerts at the Fargo Dome. We just announced Red Hot Chili Peppers. Before that, it was Pink. Now, another set of big names are making their way to Fargo, to the Fargo Dome. Rock bands Def Leppard and Motley Crue are bringing their world tour to Fargo. They're also going to be co-headlining that show. August 11th is going to be the date. They have a special guest, that's Alice Cooper, that's going to be the opening act for them. Tickets go on sale for the public at 10 o'clock next Friday morning, and they're going to be starting around $52 per seat, depending on where you want to sit and that kind of thing. If you'd like to get those pre-sale tickets, you can learn more on the band's website. I believe the Red Hot Chili Pepper tickets go on sale this morning at 10 o'clock. Yeah, you're correct. It's a big show, and hey, something for the rockers here, too, with, mm -hmm. you know, Motley Crue and Def Leppard. I wasn't sure who was the lead. But you, you thought maybe Def Leppard? Yeah, it says they're co-headlining, so I guess, I don't know, they don't okay. want someone to steal the thunder, but both good bands, of course. Big, big story today. Everyone's talking about it. Uh, breaking this morning, WNBA star Brittany Griner is back in the U.S. She touched down on U.S. soil, San Antonio, Texas, at 4.30 this morning after being released in a prisoner swap. Uh, we had brand new video. We were tracking it live as it was happening this morning. Uh, you probably remember or you've heard Griner spent more than 10 months imprisoned in Russia. She was arrested for illegally carrying THC vape cartridges at the Moscow airport. Victor Boot, a notorious Russian arms dealer, was swapped out in exchange for Griner's uh, freedom. Mm -hmm. So and if you're watching GMA this morning, just a, a lot more of a, a breakdown and reaction um, and a lot of different parties. Yeah, a lot of mixed feelings yes. about exactly what transpired of the deal and that kind of thing. So one of those big talkers today for sure. Um, one other thing we want to give you an update on and talk a little quieter because Lydia is doing a live uh, cut in for GMA weather right now. So it's that uh, rising hospitalization rates because of things like the flu, RSV, COVID, of course, still a thing. National health leaders are calling it a triple demic right now. 
um, you know, is something that we're tracking. The Department of Health and Human Services says more than 80% of U.S. hospital beds are currently taken. So that's obviously a lot. That's an 8% hike from just the past two weeks. So that's continuing to rise. And then let's see, um, only one time during the Omicron surge of the virus did these same levels of hospital beds being taken up occur. So mm. kind of to put that into perspective, it's uh, not a great deal right now. No, that's a big, big story that we've been tracking for sure. Uh, today, Friday night football, mm -hmm. it's kind of confusing. We keep talking to people like, buy some football, not tomorrow. <laughs> it's today. today. Uh, so probably a lot of people will be taking off from work a little bit early. Mm -hmm. uh, our pregame show, Game Day with Dom Izzo, is going to be on at 3 o'clock today. Yep. The game at the Fargo Dome is at 6 o'clock mm -hmm. today. So, of course, Dom is already in-house. I heard him say, oh, it's going to be a crazy, busy <laughs> yeah, day. Uh, hot mic, 9 to 11 on WDAY Extra, also on Inform.com. Just follow his Twitter feed as well because he is like – inside oh, this yeah. game so all playoff on. action kind of fun it's fun to have a friday night football game in playoffs yeah. so must win samford i have to say sam sam Bird. sam because samford not yeah. samford the bulldogs they're the sixth ranked team so i think ndsu's third rank so should be a good matchup should be fun go bison um all right as we wrap up we want to tell you about that deal we got yes going on. absolutely our black friday deal continues Half off your annual subscription to Inform.com. Everyone loves a deal. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's the best Christmas gift you could give someone, maybe to yourself or to the person who has exactly. everything. Uh, you can get that right now. Just go to Inform.com slash subscribe. Half off goes for a couple more weeks, but half off your entire year subscription. So check that out. Uh, Inforum.com is where you can find that deal. And quickly bringing things full circle, we're probably going to have updates throughout our newscast today on that uh, semi-fire that happened on yep. 994. We're expecting an official press release sometime this morning, so you can tune in. I'm not for sure when that's going to come out, but we're going right. to have the latest details when it does happen. We have newscasts at 11, 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10, so you can be assured once we get that information, it'll be in those newscasts. Yes, 11 o'clock, 4, 5, 6, 9 and 10, we have you covered throughout the day. And, of course, that uh, pregame, game day, uh, all of that happening at 3 o'clock today as well. I have to keep <laughs> I keep saying it to remind myself so I don't, you know, exactly. forget to, to get into Bison mode starting at 3 o'clock. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great weekend. Go Bison. We'll be back Monday morning starting at 5 a.m. Have, have a good a day, one. folks.